Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of Media Coffee. My name is Nariman, I'm your host, and I have been interviewing journalists from leading media organizations around the globe to answer some of our clients' biggest, biggest questions, like how to communicate with the media, uh, what's, what's the best time to approach media, pitch to the media, and also follow up with them. Um, media Coffee is brought to you by Cision, uh, which is a global provider for earned media software and services for PR agencies and comms professionals. If you would like to know more about uh, Cision, uh, feel Feel free to send us an email or follow us on social media to keep up to date with our news. Um, I'm so glad today to have um, a journalist from Kenya, uh, Vintage Oweno, uh, from um, East Africa, um, sorry, the East African newspaper. Uh, Vincent, if it's possible, can you please open your mic and just tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. Thank you so much, uh, Norman. So as you say, my name is Vincent Oweno. I'm a reporter at uh, the East African. I've been at East African for about two years now. Uh, I started at the Nation Media Group. It's part of the Nation Media Group. So I started at the Nation Media Group as a trainee in uh, uh, August 2021. Then I went through a five-month training program. Then in January 2022, I joined the East African. So at uh, the East African, I mostly do business reporting and uh, it's business and technology as well as uh, the financial markets, the cryptocurrency markets, the stock markets, all those markets. I also do international trade and international relations, geopolitics a little bit, peace and security. And I also cover environment and climate change and how it relates mostly. The how is very important, how it relates to all these other parts of my docket, all these other things that I cover, that is business, technology, uh, re con re conflict and security, politics, geopolitics, especially international relations and international trade. Yeah, I, I wanted to know more about uh, the media landscape in Kenya. So, for example, a lot of uh, our clients um, wonder what are um, the biggest newspapers, for example, the biggest new media outlets that they can reach out to if they're interested in um, entering uh, the, the the Kenyan market, for example. Um, and also, uh, what are the popular um, the popular uh, form of uh, of media as well? So, obviously, newspaper, magazines, radio, TV as well. Those are biggest. But do you think you have new form or new uh, form of media like podcasting? Are they becoming popular? Um, social media, the use of social media in general. So, if you can just give me uh, an overview of the media landscape in Kenya. Okay. All right. So in Kenya, if you if the news is big or if you want people to view your news as big, you're going to want it covered by the Nation Media Group. Nation Media Group is actually the largest media house in East and Central Africa. It's not just in Kenya. So we have branches in uh, Tanzania. We have branch in Uganda, Rwanda, uh, the DRC, Burundi, South Sudan. So we have correspondents from across Africa. It's actually the biggest in terms of circulation, in terms in terms of profits, in terms of uh, turnover, our revenue is the biggest. So if you if you want uh, media coverage, you want your news to be covered first by the National Media Group. It's the largest because we have actually all all uh, all all forms of media. We have broadcast, we have print, we have digital, we have audio. All these we have we have them. Then the and I'm not just saying that because I work there. <laughs> Yeah, then after the Nation Media Group in Kenya, we have the Standard Media Group, which is also uh, quite large. It has a number of newspapers uh, by my count, I think two of them. Uh, the Standard is actually the oldest newspaper in Kenya. And then it started in 1902. So it's also very reputable. It's called, uh, it's, 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 its slogan is Kenya's Bold Newspaper. It's been known for that for years. Uh, it also has a television network, a broadcast, and several radio channels, radio stations. Then after that, we have the Royal Media Services. Uh, it's a group of uh, several broadcast outlets, uh, including uh, one national broadcast TV, uh, I think around two or three vernacular TV stations, and uh, one English uh, radio channel, and one Swahili radio channel, and several vernacular uh, radio stations. So if you want to reach the vernacular, the locals, the indigenous people, there you are your go-to person in terms of that. 
these others focus on English and Swahili speakers mostly, but they, they focus on uh, the vernacular speakers. Yeah, so uh, at the Daily Nation, at the, uh, the Nation Media Group, we have a number of newspapers. And of course, the Daily Nation is the biggest. It's a local newspaper uh, for the Kenyan audience. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the leading in terms of circulation, in terms of readership, in terms of revenues, it's the leading in Kenya, followed by the standard newspaper. So the Daily Nation is a it's it's basically a political paper if you ask me, but it's a, it's the agenda setter. It's the watchdog of Kenya. The slogan is the truth. It's 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 basically the truth. Yeah. Then we also have the Business Daily. Business Daily is purely a business newspaper. It's also owned by the National Media Group. It's English. It's in English, and uh, it's uh, the most it's it's normally described as the most authoritative newspaper in the country. Basically, it's the only one. Although this, all these other newspapers have, of course, business pages, but Business Daily focuses purely on business, and it does a good job at that. I would say. Then we have uh, Taifa Leo. Taifa Leo is uh, is in Swahili. It's uh, it's big in the coastal region where Swahili is uh, majorly spoken. Uh, it's not as big as the Daily Nation in terms of the size, the page numbers, and the readership as well. So it is uh, okay. It's the national language. It's a national language. It is actually the national language, but people prefer not to read in Swahili. They just prefer to speak speak it. So it's not as wide as the Daily Nation. Then lastly, we have uh, the East African. The East African is a regional newspaper. It covers the entire region, the entire East Africa region. That is seven countries. And even uh, beyond the countries that are members of the East African community, uh, as you know, we have seven countries in the East African community. But in the wider East African region, we have like about 15 countries. So we cover those that entire region because someone in Kenya would be interested in about knowing something that is going on in Ethiopia, which is our, our neighbor to the north. But Ethiopia is not a member of the East African community. Yes, so basically the East African was started to follow on uh, or to, to check on the progress of the East African community in 1994 when it was uh, uh, restarted. I would say restarted with the three Kenyan, three East African countries that were Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Would and you basically, say, I'm sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Would you say using podcast, for example, um, yeah. is is becoming popular or social media? Would you say those are um, outlets or platforms that clients can use? Yes, of course. Uh, using podcast is actually becoming very, very popular right now. I even at the National Media Group, we use podcasts a lot. But as you know, uh, podcast, the story, a story you do, in form of a podcast is not the same story you do for print or for digital. It's a different kind of story and it's a different approach to a story. It's it's normally not the hard news that you'll do in a podcast, although it's a continually changing landscape. And I believe in the near future, even in Kenya, we'd have uh, the hard news. I know there are, there, are, there are podcasts that deal in hard news. Every morning, they give you what happens. Sorry, I muted myself by accident. So I know there are podcasts that uh, do, do those kind of hard news uh, format. Uh, I've heard of uh, actually several of them, actually, especially in the Western countries. But in Kenya, I haven't had any so far. Right now, uh, radio channels do that work, but I don't think their bulletins end up as podcasts. But I think that that, that would be great. Although... Podcasts do a great job in terms of features and uh, the agenda setting. They mostly do issues that affect the society, gender issues, conflict issues, mental health, and just things that would really interest people to learn. Um, so in terms of um, um, questions that directly related to our clients, so obviously as a company, we do distribute press releases for our clients. So what is the attitude in Kenya um, around press releases? Are they still accept accepted? Uh, do journalists look forward to receiving these press releases? And is uh, are they useful for them still? Yeah, thank you. Uh, of course, uh, press releases generally... Uh, writing a story from a press release is a little bit, uh, would we say, uh, naive, or it's something that is left for the young budding journalists. 
the ones who are just getting the news from or interns because they want some, they want a story with their byline out there. But for established journalists, they would not want to write a story from uh, press releases. I remember when I was starting, uh, one senior journalist showed me the number of press releases they had in their email and they just trusted all of them. <laughs> so generally, I don't think people like receiving press releases unless, of course, they were expecting it or unless it is telling something new. Problem, I don't know if this is a, a general problem, but in Kenya, I would say PR practitioners do not know how to do press releases or when to do, for, the matter, for that matter, when to do press releases. See, most of the time, the press releases that you receive, it's not anything new. It's not newsworthy. And then someone will call you to follow up if you receive that press release and if you go into another story. <laughs> it's very ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So normally, I don't think we have a problem with the press release. Issue is, is it something new? Is it newsworthy? Is it something? Also, another error that they make, they just have a media list. Any journalist they know, they send a press release to them. They don't care whether it is something they normally cover. It is something of their interest. Because if you send me a press release about uh, a sick child, or let me say, about a medical uh, a medical milestone. I don't care about that because I don't cover health or medical milestones. Or you, if you sent me a press release about uh, a political uh, a political a political truce between two rival parties in Kenya, I don't care about that. Yeah. So if you if 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 PR practitioners can actually target their uh, press releases very appropriately so they know this press release is going to land on, to, on someone who covers this, then even if they're not going to write a story based entirely on that press release, but it can inform a story that they're going to do, and they can come back to you and tell you, you sent me a press release about this. Uh, would you be willing to link me up with someone so-and-so from this organization so I speak to them on this story that I'm talking about? That I'm, that I'm writing about. I do that uh, quite a number of times, and I think it's the best way to get uh, publicity for whichever organization that you're working for as a, uh, they're doing their PR for. It's the best way to get to, to, to improve their publicity. This is actually interesting because this is one of the questions that I usually ask later on. What are the mistakes that PR professionals make when they reach out to journalists? So thank you th so much for mentioning this. So um, from, from your point of view, obviously talking about the issues and the mistakes that PR professionals do, um, what and you you probably touched base on this, like having something newsworthy or a press release that with new information. Uh, what do you think are the criteria? What are you as a journalist, aside from the two things that you've just mentioned, what are other criteria that you're looking for in a press release in order for you to actually open it and maybe write a story from that press release or around it? Okay, uh, First, I personally, I do open all press releases, not, not just press releases, I do open all emails that I receive. And uh, if I don't see anything worthwhile within the first paragraph, I don't continue reading it. But if I can see something worthwhile in the headline or the subject of that email and first paragraph, then I can continue reading it. So uh, I think if you, if you studied journalism uh, earlier on before you became a PR practitioner, you'd know that they are the news values. And no journalist is going to write a story that does not uh, meet all the news values, if not most of them. So when you write a press release, ask yourself, what is the value of this press release vis-a-vis uh, -vis news values of a story? Is it timely? Is it close to this journalist that I'm sending it to? Is it in public interest? Is it something that is going to in, in interest the public? Is it something that, uh, I'm, I forget the other news values, but it's, 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 it, you need to ask yourself whether this press release is going to meet the news values for this particular journalist that you're sending it to. So I think that is one of the, that is one of the things that they really need to uh, have, uh, to have in mind when they're sending up, up, when they're drafting a press release. And then another thing they need to know is uh, in, in, in view of the current events, 
most PR practitioners delay their, their, their press releases so much. Because if something happened today, and then you want to write a press release about it tomorrow, no one's going to do that story. No one's going to do that story after 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 it, it has already broken. And then there is also the aspect of targeting. Uh, it, I, I don't know if it's the case in the UK, but in Kenya we have uh, blogs or, or online online media media houses. They are entirely online. Someone just goes, uh, establishes a buys a website domain, and then starts a blog. And then they call themselves news. So if you want your story to be covered by the blogs. You definitely don't want it to be covered by Business Daily because Business Daily is a reputable newspaper. You're not going to break a story to the blogs first and then you go to the reputable newspaper and want them to cover it. So there is also that kind of priority. You need to know who is going to cover this kind of story because normally when we see something interesting in a press release, first thing you go online and you check if it has been covered anywhere else. Then when you see it has been covered by a cheap blog, you say, ah, no, I'm not going to add my byline to that story. Yes. Because sometimes you do a story and it, someone reads it and just feels like this story, this guy was paid for it. Was paid for it. Sometimes you are not even paid for it, but someone just feels like you were paid for it because the nature of that story itself it is not newsworthy. It is not a timely. It is not close to you. It is not something that you would otherwise do unless you didn't have something else to do. You are paid for it. Yeah, so people just like to uh, maintain their reputation by doing things that would actually uphold their integrity and reputation. I don't know if I correctly answered that question. No, you did actually. That's actually quite quite an important information, and also I think valuable for the for our clients as well to know. Um, because as you said, um, there is always you know this conversation around press releases, um, and also the communication between journalists and PR or comms professionals. Um, so it's really it's really important to understand the kind of issues that journalists like you face in Kenya, for example, um, in terms of like maybe receiving press releases that are not related to you or to the topics that you usually cover. Um, so yeah, so I appreciate that a lot, to be honest. Um, so j just asking a little bit more about the press releases themselves. So um, what is the preferred length of the press release and format as well? If, for example, you've seen something you're interested in, um, do you prefer to receive something long and very detailed or something short that you can just write a story from and then maybe um, follow up with the PR professional if they, if you have more questions about it? Truth is, uh, it depends on where the press release is coming, is coming from. Because if it's coming from, let's say, a government entity, you don't want to follow up with the with the PR guy and ask them, hey, can I talk to this the, the minister or talk to this person? You you most likely are just going to write your story from that entire press release and maybe add a little bit of background. If it's just a, a breaking story or a hard news story. But if it's coming from an organization that is launching some particular product, you definitely don't want to write your entire story from that particular press release unless it's a very big organization. So uh, if it's coming from a private entity that you can actually follow up and do your, an interview of your own and delve deeper into the details, then the press release would rather be shorter, giving you just the basics of the of the of the of the, the gist of the story, the gist of the story, and then the rest you can follow up with the with the PR person. But as I say, that is I feel like that is just something for serious or uh, established journalists. The young or starting journalists will definitely just want to write the story from the press release itself. So they, they would themselves prefer the longer one. But personally, I don't have a preference. As long as I get the information that I want in the press release, it's okay because I'm not afraid of reading. I normally read it, read it and I read it very fast. So the problem is when the press release is too long and has too little information, so that, that, that becomes a problem. But when it's too short and direct to the point, that's okay too long and adds more information and enlightens me further on the story, that's okay. Yeah. And what do you think is the best time to send a press release or to communicate with a journalist? Best time in terms of best day that they can, someone can send a press release in where their story might be picked up more or maybe read uh, by a journalist? Good question, by the way. Uh, it's good to know when, uh, when, what what the outlet 
that journalist is working on. Especially for us print journalists, we know that there are weeklies, there are dailies, there are those that don't go out on weekends, there are those that, uh, well, for, for instance, business daily is Monday to Friday only. There's a newspaper called The Star, it's Monday to Friday. Then uh, Daily Nation is every day. And then we have The East African is a weekly. And uh, I think they are also quarterly, some quarterly or some, some monthly, not sure. But so uh, for, if you want your story to be run on the, on the print, and that's, that's something really interesting. There, there, there are guys who just say, I'm sending you this story only for print. <laughs> They definitely they just want it for the print for the print uh, publication. So if you know you want your story for print, you need to know when that print goes to press, when that paper goes to press. So for instance, if you want your story on the business daily and you send it on Friday, you'll just be sure. Actually, if you spend it, you send it on Friday afternoon or evening, you can be sure if it's a worthwhile story, it will wait until the following week on Tuesday, especially if you want it on print. Uh, the East African as well, you need to send it earlier in the week, uh, maybe most likely before Friday, that is Thursday, because the October comes out on Saturday. You need to send it on Thursday, uh, going going backwards. And then in terms of time, I think the earlier, the earlier in the day, the better, because normally by around noon, someone knows all the stories they're going to work on for the day. So if you send it after that, it means if it's an important story, they're going to stop what they're doing and do that story, or you'll have to wait for the following day if it's not that important. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. This is really important. And then what about weekends and public holidays? Um, do you do you check your emails during these times? Do you think it's a good idea to avoid them? Or do you think maybe um um my, some press releases might be accepted? Uh, well, obviously, aside from entertainment, I believe then uh, that might be, um, you know, suitable to be sent during public holidays or weekends, etc. But like anything else, do you think people, companies should avoid this these times? No, 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 not at all. Actually, there are people who work on weekends. Uh, as a journalist, you know, you don't have public holidays and uh, some don't have weekends. You know, we you'll have two off days a week. They don't have to fall on the weekend. You can choose Monday, Tuesday. You can choose Thursday, Friday. You can choose Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday. So for us who do a weekly, we have the pleasure to have our off days on Saturday and Sunday. But not every journalist has that liberty, that 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 kind of freedom. So uh, I would answer that from my perspective because I I have my off days over the weekends. And I wouldn't say I don't want to receive an email over the weekend. I do receive lots of them, but it depends on the con content of that email. That's what will determine whether I'll read it or not. If it's important, if I think it's important, I'll read it, not because I, I want to do a story. I just read it so it informs my plans for the following week. But if it's not that important, I can, I, I'll feel like it can wait until Monday. Yeah. But public holidays, no, we don't have public holidays. We work every day. Oh, okay, that's interesting. They didn't know that. Okay. We do. <laughs> um, and then I think one of my last questions, actually, no, I wanted to um to ask you about the press releases and the sources that you, that you receive them from. So do you prefer to receive press releases from companies directly or, or from PR agencies, or do you have other sources to check press releases? Um, does it really matter? Actually, I don't think it matters the source of the press release, the content matter more. Uh, mostly, even our editors sometimes send us press releases when they feel it's important. And it's actually also important that when you send a press release to a journalist, you also send it to their editor. Okay. So I don't think it really matters who sends it. What matters is the content of that press release. And you, you will know that if the editor sends it to you, Sometimes I receive a press release and I say, oh, this is important. And before I tell the editor that I have received something important, because you have to pitch a story first before you start writing it. So before I tell the editor, they already sent it to me as well. And I feel like now this is something really, really important. I have to stop everything I work on to do that particular story. Yeah. 
And then an important question, actually, that I wanted to ask, and I completely forgot. Uh, what are the most uh, the platforms that journalists use in Kenya most? So, for example, social media platforms that they use for prof professional reasons. Uh, I would say Twitter. Twitter is uh, top top of that list. Most journalists are on Twitter, both to uh, spread information, to help spread information. Uh, through their stories or breaking news a lot of those kind of things. And they are also on Twitter to get news because most organizations are going to post news on Twitter or updates on Twitter. Secondly is uh, LinkedIn. So many are, uh, are on LinkedIn also to get news or mostly to get sources, especially experts you can interview on a particular, on a particular, on a particular subject. We, we use LinkedIn a lot to, to get them there. Uh, another platform that I see them using a lot is, uh, which one? I don't say Facebook. Facebook is not that popular in Kenya, especially at this uh, at this moment. Most, uh, it's, it's just for fun stuff, not for professional work, just for fun stuff, as I say it. Uh, I don't know if there's another one. I don't think so. I think that's that, yeah. that's just it. Yeah. I'm wondering if the changes in uh, within Twitter are affecting uh, journalists or, or the way they work. Do you think it will have an effect? Obviously, changing Twitter to, I, I think it's X now or whatever the name is. Do you think that ha would have any effect on the way that journalists use, uh, use Twitter? Um, I think right now it's a little bit too early to say because... Uh, you know, the people with uh, most followership on Twitter are actually journalists. Journalists have quite the followership, those established ones. Okay, I wouldn't say I, I have quite the followership myself for that followed. But uh, journalists have quite the followership. And as uh, Elon Musk said, that they want to have the uh, advertising revenue sharing with, uh, with, with, with Twitter, so those who tweet content, content creators on Twitter, then that might be good for them. For those who have massive followership on Twitter, that would be good for them. But apart from that, most several journalists lost their verification mark. And that means anyone can create a parody account in their name and spread fake news. And I haven't seen any of them uh, buying the verification check by Twitter. I don't think it's a necessary uh, expenditure for them. It's not necessary at all, actually. Yeah, so I think that that will definitely affect them in that way. Uh, they, they, they will fear, they will have to, I have seen some uh, who, have, who have had their identities, uh, I would say stolen, but uh, they have had a part of the accounts created in their names and used to spread news that they would, they would, not, they would not say themselves. So that's definitely going to affect them. Apart from that, I don't think, I think journalists know way too well how to verify information. So I don't think they can get fake information from a party. Although it has happened to someone I know in the in the past, but I would say that was a little bit of a negligence. Yeah, because it was actually before Elon Musk took over Twitter and there were verified accounts. Any last recommendations that you would like to share with us? Okay. Uh, first, I think the relationship between a journalist and a PR person or an organization is a two-way road, which means when you want information out, you talk to the journalist. Then when the journalist wants information from you, they'll talk to you. So most PR guys or most uh, organizations forget that two-way road. When they want you to publish information, they'll they'll always they, they'll be on your case. They won't stop ringing your phone. They'll follow you up uh, all the way. But now when you want information, they won't even answer your calls. And that's that's actually very wrong. So I think especially for international organizations, uh, we normally require a lot of information, especially pre-entry before maybe they're they are eyeing entry into the Kenyan market, especially for us who do international uh, news. Pre-entry, we normally require lots of information. And you know, sometimes news is, uh, or a story is uh, a scoop when it's only with you, before it's with someone else. So sometimes you you really try to reach these people and they are just, I, I don't know, it's, it's an inconvenience for them to speak to you. So that's 
first. Then secondly, I think it's really, really important that uh, these guys create relationship with uh, PR guys, with, with journalists. I mean, PR guys create relationship with journalists. It's just like between a teacher and a student. The student is the source of income. So if they don't create a relationship with them, then it means they're not creating a relationship with their source of source of income. So it's really good to create a relationship with the journalists and so that you can have a common understanding. So when you 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 work together, you work together as friends and not exactly as you can work together as colleagues, of course, and also as friends, it improves the relationship between you. It makes them comfortable to come to you with questions and it makes you comfortable to go to them with stories. Yes, although you can't, of course, you can't create a relationship with everyone, but I know like journalists, PR guys have specific uh, sections that they handle, or specific organizations that they handle. And then lastly is just to know that uh, the way a PR officer has pressure from the client to get information out there is the same way a journalist has pressure to pay their bills actually, because what, what pays their bills is the stories, the stories that they do. Sometimes it's literally those stories. If they do a bigger story, it's a bigger pay, uh, especially for those who are paid for contribution. So it's, it's, it's better to understand that when whenever you come to them with a story, you need to know that it is that story that is going to pay their bills. So if they do 600 word story and it is condensed into an 80 word brief, that means they're going to lose a lot of money for that for that particular day of that particular week. So it's 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 very good to target the right journalists with the right stories, and also to understand when they don't want or when they don't publish a particular story, even though it might disappoint. You. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vincent, for your time. I really appreciate it. And for everyone that's watching, if you have any questions, please please feel free to send us an email or comments on our post, and we will definitely try to answer them in future episodes.